Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. Yo, strange things do happen in this world. I was still reading that other message that was sent to us by one of our dear sister who was saying that she met this other guy with a sneak in his wardrobe. Yo, strange things do happen in this world. There is a message that was sent to me. Then I had to ask one of our admins to give us a translation. The translation reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, please post for me. I want to confess that I am a witch, and this is how it all began. Growing up, each and every holiday, I would go back to the village where my grandmother was staying. My grandmother was staying in the village with some of my mother's siblings, but the poverty that they have, my brother, it is just unthinkable. If I ever get the time, I will tell you that story. It is a story for another day. So this grandmother of mine that I used to go and visit, while it will be school holidays, she was my mom's mother. She loved me a lot. Whenever I would be there, she would always say to me, daughter of my daughter, please come and take this meat so that you can eat and be satisfied. And whenever she would tell me to come and eat the meat with her that she would be eating, I will be very happy because I was more like her favorite. She used to give me this meat and she would never give the meat that she would be eating to some of my cousins. The meat that she used to give me was like biltong. She would give me sometimes dried meat. Then sometimes as I was growing much older, she started giving me meat that was uncooked. All the meat that she used to give me, it was meat that was prepared without adding salt or any spices to it. Even the dried meat that she gave me, had no salt or any spices. But this meat, it was only me and her who could see this meat. I don't know how I can explain it to you. What used to happen is that back in our village, we have those round mud houses and there is a round mud house that will be used as a kitchen for the compound. So in that round mud hut that was used as a kitchen, there was always meat, but all of my other cousins, they never saw this meat Whenever my grandmother will tell me to go and fetch some meat so that me and her can eat the meat, when I would enter in the, into the kitchen, then the meat will just magically appear out of nowhere. My other cousins never saw the meat and my grandmother always told me not to show others where this meat would appear sometimes. She used to tell me that if, if I showed my cousins the place where the meat used to appear, then I will be forced to share with my cousins. And whenever we'll be on our school holidays, most of my siblings will be there with our grandmother. So we were a lot and I didn't want to share this meat with anyone. This meat was so wonderful for my test buds, so much that I didn't want to share with anyone but my grandmother. Now, when I was a bit older, then my grandmother gave me some meat and she said, daughter of my daughter, here, yeah, eat this meat. This meat is the flesh that I took from your uncle when he passed away. After I had taken this flesh from his corpse, I then dried it up and I kept it for you. My grandmother told me that she had kept this dried meat ever since I was a little child. This was more like a token that she was giving to me and I became more like an apprentice and she taught me everything about witchcraft. We used to go to the meeting place where we were supposed to go and meet up with other witches. That was when my grandmother passed away. And when my grandmother passed away, I then took her place and I became more like the keeper of the meat, the meat that will be taken from dead people. This position that I have, that I inherited from my grandmother, it is quite a powerful position because in this position that I am in, I can use it as a bargaining tool with other witches. In our group, we signed an oath and this oath that we signed amongst ourselves, it is more like a binding contract. And every year, anyone who pledges allegiance to our group has to sacrifice 
one of their family members whenever the calendar date will fall into your circle. But in the contract, there is a space for you to find some sort of relief. What you do is that when your time has arrived in our language in Shona, we call it Jana. When this time has arrived and a sacrifice will be required from you, and if you are not willing to give the flesh of your relative to the coven, you then activate the protocol where you ask for assistance from the coven, and the coven will then help you to sacrifice one who is not related to you. We call it blood for blood, but you cannot totally deny the coven the meat of your relative forever, for there is a time frame in which you cannot postpone, but eventually the blood of your relative will be required from you to give to the coven. After the death of my grandmother, I went ahead and I enacted in her position of distributing the meat fairly amongst the coven members. That is my duty that I have to perform each and every time that we collect all of this meat from the dead bodies. I have to distribute it fairly amongst ourselves. There are certain instances whereby I receive some guests and some of these guests that I receive some of them will be in form of spirits or autocologies that would have been sent by their masters. Most of the times when they come over to speak with me is the one who keeps the key to the place where we keep all of our meat dried or fresh meat then they will be asking for food telling me that in their area they will be going through a period of drought so i will give them according to the power of their coven and as for our coven there are some times that when we lack anything we do send our spirits that we work with to other covens asking for their help there are some witches out there who have that talent of connecting their spirit and their physical body when they come out in the night. But as for me, I lack that gift to join my soul and body and go to the graves in my physical body. But to me, my soul is the one that wakes up. After my soul is woken up, then it will go to the graveyards so as to meet with the rest of my witch friends. When it leaves my body, it will be more like a vision than reality, but I will be seeing everything in real time. When one dies, what we do is that we go and lay a claim whilst the body will be still in the mortuary. This is very important. After bewitching someone, we have to go to the mortuary so as to witness that this corpse that is lying in this fridge, this corpse, the meat belongs to us so that other spirits that do notorious things in the mortuary can know that this body must not be touched for it belongs to our coven. After the body of the deceased has been buried on the night of the burial, we will meet up at the grave of that person who would have died and we will then stand in a circle circling the grave of the deceased and we will call out the name of the dead person and once and once we have called out the name of the dead person then he or she will be suddenly raised up from their grave and once they would have been raised up from the grave then the person will stand amongst us we will be in full control of their body when one is raised up you will still be alive and we will still proceed to end the person's life if someone is bewitched they do not die totally they just enter into this state whereby people that live in this world they think that so and so has died but they would have died physically then once we have raised them up from their grave that is when we will proceed the person's life completely after the second death that is when we will start to cut out the pieces of the tender meat from their dead body as for me i prefer the lungs the heart and all the tender meat than the steak then as for the steak we will cut it up chop it up and we will dry it just for future use dear listeners right there was a message that i received from our dear sister then we had to translate this message if you have any questions that you want me to ask most of the people that do come and confess please do not hesitate to contact us via our whatsapp number or you can use our email address